Welcome back to Crawford Clark Close Up and our horror season of reviews. So far, we've discussed Rosemary's Baby on the film's 50th anniversary and this year's Chilling Hereditary. And now we're going back 20 years to 1998 when Okayama Japan born Hideo Nakata's Ringu was launched on audiences. On its 20th anniversary, we take a look back at the appeal of this seemingly simple narrative that has gripped fans of the genre and left audiences feeling very unnerved. There are stories of a mysterious videotape. For really young viewers of this review, ask your parents. It was the form of home media before DVD and Blu-ray came along that contains crackly footage and a myriad of bizarre images before the screen goes black and you get a phone call giving you seven days to the minute you watch the video until you die. We begin with two teenage girls joking around talking about boys and holidays until one of them suggests that she watched this very video and it was seven nights ago. Nakata is a master at preparing audiences for moments and then pulling the wool from under our feet. You wonder what is happening as one of the girls teases the other, goes to make drinks in the kitchen, and then hears the television turn itself on before a blinding light hits the girl in the face and she's paralysed. We quickly learn of this girl's death, as well as similar incidents with other teenagers, and it's down to a reporter and her ex-husband to interview friends of the victims and investigate the origins of this cursed tape, leading to a chilling denouement. Ringu is the first in a string of sequels and remakes, and yet, for unnerving terror, you only really need to see this original. With creepy sound effects and engaging lead performances from Japanese cinema re regulars Nanako Matsushima and Hiroyuki Sanada, who himself has since broken into mainstream Hollywood with roles in films as diverse as The Last Samurai, Sunshine, and The Wolverine, this is an unnerving film that keeps you on the edge of your seat wondering how these protagonists are going to solve this mystery. The counting down of each day that they have left to solve the case is also nicely done as the audiences follow these characters as they race against their own deadlines. What makes Nakata's original so effective is in the creepy, almost straight-to-video feel of the cinematography. The film shouldn't really work on a wide scale, but it does because audiences buy into the fear of the unknown. What is actually killing people when they watch a series of images on a video? The release of Ring for home consumption also carries a disclaimer stating the distributors of the film accept no responsibility for injuries or fatalities that might occur during or after viewing the film, thereby fueling the power of the narrative. It's easy to see how this is still the highest grossing horror film in Japanese cinema history. It's a hugely effective chiller that employs great effects, particularly in the film's terrifying finale, and it's a relatively simple film to make, as well as a lean one at only 95 minutes. It's also, importantly, a film that doesn't rely on jump scares, like the inferior remake of the film starring Naomi Watts from 2002. The Crawford Clark close-up standout scene is the perfectly constructed finale where Sadako climbs out of the well and out of the television. On its 20th anniversary, Ringu still has great appeal. It's a pared-down, effective chiller that builds suspense throughout and maintains the power to frighten audiences. From Crawford Clark close-up... Alrighty then. Have you seen the original film from the Ring franchise? What are your thoughts on this modern horror classic? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and please subscribe to the channel for more reviews just like this. You can find Crawford Clark Close Up on Facebook and Twitter, and you can also email us your ideas and suggestions for the channel to crawfordclarkcloseup at gmail.com. Up next in our horror season, we'll be taking a look back at perhaps the quintessential telling of Bram Stoker's Dracula on screen with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in 1958's Horror of Dracula. Thanks for watching, and until next time, that's a wrap.